Good evening. The first 10 Democrats have just finished the first debate of the 2020 campaign, with another 10 taking the stage tomorrow. It's an enormous field, in some ways like the one President Trump defeated. This time, though, it was heavy on policy and light on insults, a mix of familiar and unfamiliar names. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio, Ohio Congressman Tim Ryan, former HUD Secretary Julian Castro, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker, Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren, former Texas Congressman Beto O'Rourke, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar, Hawaii Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, Washington Governor Jay Inslee, and former Maryland Congressman John Delaney. With us here tonight, a team that's almost as large and certainly no less <laughs> eminent, the best political team on television. Hopefully we won't have the sound problems helping to break down what just happened in Miami tonight. Governor McAuliffe, let's start with you. Great to Winners, be with you, Andrew. Winners, who, do you, how do you, who stood out? Uh, I think it was a good night for Lillian Castro. I think it was a good night for Elizabeth Warren. Uh, I don't think the ball got moved much tonight for anybody. Um, I was very happy and proud of the Democrats that uh, I think they mentioned President Trump's name only a couple times. Mm -hmm. If you go back to 15 with President Obama, I think it was every other sentence in the Republican debate. I thought that was good. Uh, good discussion on the issues. Uh, I'm a little disappointed. Uh, I think we needed to have more discussion on those issues that actually affect Americans every single day. They didn't want to hear us talking about Mitch McConnell and we spent a lot of time on Medicare for all, but people sitting home, Anderson, right now, they're worried about their prescription drug costs. They're worried about getting in a car and, you know, driving and spend an hour and a half to go see their kids play a ball game. We needed more discussion on those issues that affect, I thought John Delaney was that exactly right when he answered that. Infrastructure, you know, prescription drugs. I didn't hear workforce training at all tonight. One of the biggest issues our country is facing. I never heard K-12 discussed tonight. Van Jones, did anybody who it wasn't really well known on that stage break out in any way? I thought totally differently. First all of right. all, good. I, I was I was super proud to be a Democrat. Yeah. Listen, take any of those people, shake them up in a ba in a basket, take any two out, run them against Donald Trump. I'm for him. I thought they all did it better than Trump and super well. But listen, uh, Elizabeth Warren look like a, a, a college professor with a bunch of graduate students around her half the time. She is able to go back and forth between policy and the, the human thing better than anybody. But it was Castro that came out of nowhere. Nobody was talking about Castro. He did the Texas takedown, turned around, clocked Beto. I mean, you never saw it coming. The, the thing about these debates, you never know who's going to have a moment. Castro is winning the, the Google primary right now. He went up 3,000% in terms of people searching for the guy. He bought himself a lifeline at night, and that's why I love these debates. You know, you are nerding out in such a great way. <laughs> I love it. No, I love it. I mean, it's, yeah. we're all nerds, obviously, this, this here, was, so I love was, that. Uh, thank you. How about you? I, I actually predicted this morning on CNN that the breakouts were going to be Castro, Booker, and Warren, and I'm feeling really, really proud of myself. Well, well done. Well thank done. you. Thank you. No, I, I think I, Elizabeth Warren was obviously the front runner. I felt bad that she had to go with this group because I wanted to see her next to Bernie and Biden and Kamala and the other people who get mentioned in the top tier. But she dominated this debate, especially the first half. Right. When she wasn't allowed to get in on that immigration question, I think that was that was a real problem for her. She'd spent the whole day in Homestead in the detention center. She was the only candidate that did that. I wish that she could have gotten in there. But Castro has been so strong on policy this entire time. He just hasn't received the same quality or quantity of coverage that the great, other guys have. He was great on paper, but you didn't know if he could be great in person. Mm -hmm. Now he's great in person, and everybody's going to talk about him tomorrow, and he now matters in a way he didn't matter. He was great on paper, but he was great in person. David Yeah, yeah well, I also think uh, it is a bit of a zero-sum game, because <laughs> if Castro had such a good night, I think Better Work probably right. suffered yeah. some yeah. Uh, because of that tonight, and I think that that is uh, pretty important. Also, Anderson, Elizabeth Warren, I agree, uh, especially in the first half of the debate. But what is also so interesting to me, and I think really important going forward, it wasn't just her performance that was dominating that first half of the debate. It was the fact that she was the frame for every question. It, whether she was being asked the question or not, it was her policy ideas of, of free college uh, that was being asked about to other candidates. It was uh, her economic vision that launched the debate. So she was sort of the pace setter for the entire field tonight, at least for the first quarter of the debate, first half of the debate. I would also say 
Um, you know, the least likable character, according to polls, <laughs> is Bill de Blasio <laughs> right. in the And I think Bill de Blasio had a pretty good oh, night for yeah, himself. Yeah, I, 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 I think, yeah, I think that he uh, sort of declared, I am not going to cede this left-wing progressive lane to just Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. I think he was jumping in there constantly. So I imagine he's going to be a little bit of a mix in that Bill de Blasio party. beating Beto was my biggest surprise of the night. <laughs> right. The fact that I would think that Bill de Blasio came out on top of a Bill-Beto exchange was just, I got that one entirely. So I think the left wing of the party did well tonight, really well. Thank you. But I think the center of the party, uh, the Amy Klobuchar's of the world, for example, Ryan, for example, uh, I don't think not so well, not as well. I don't think they, uh, I, there, was a, there was a little bit of reluctance, I think, on the part of moderates to sort of go full force on attack against the liberals. That's what makes moderates moderate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because, because they know their audience, number one, and this is the first time they're introducing themselves really on a large scale to the American public. But I sensed a reluctance from someone like Amy Klobuchar and, and others to sort of say, you know, wait a minute. She, she did at some point say, look, we can't afford to do all that. And, but I thought there might be some more challenges about Medicare for all, for example, which mm -hmm. I think you'll be discussing a lot of uh, tomorrow night with, with Joe Biden. Yeah, and I mean, and part of that was they were, see, they seemed to be reluctant to go after Warren, right? Because yeah. she's, the, she's the pace setter. Uh, and you did see in, I think, different uh, settings, somebody like Klobuchar or other people go after Warren, uh, but, but that didn't happen tonight. What I did think was odd about Warren's performance was she faded down the stretch. Totally. It was like, is Warren still on this stage? She talks about fighting a lot, right? I mean, she uses the word fight, that she has the courage to go after Donald Trump, to go after uh, big businesses, uh, to go after pharmaceutical companies. But in this debate, she didn't fight much uh, to get a word in edgewise. Bill de Blasio was interrupting all the time. I, I think Warren, are, are her next debate, well, she's I mean, got to try to interrupt. Let, let's say what it, it would it, look like if she had done that. Women what, don't interrupt as much well, as men. We're discussing whether she had I, gone I too she was, hard on that. I think she was well satisfied to let everybody else scrap with each other. She, yeah. she was at the center of the stage. The first question she got allowed her to lay out her economic premise. You know, she's been the most consistent candidate in this campaign in terms of her message, in terms of her policy. She got to share some of those. And I think she was pretty well satisfied to let everybody else uh, scrap with each other. She was unscathed yeah. in this.